Hello, my name is Alba Rivas, and in this quick take, I'm going to talk about two web standards in which Lightning Web Components are based. These are custom elements and HTML templates. Let's start talking about the custom elements specification. With this specification, you will be able to create custom HTML elements that you can use in your HTML pages as if they were a standard HTML elements. In vanilla JavaScript, this is the way in which you create custom elements. First, you need to define a class and the class needs to extend HTML element. Classes are part of ECMAScript 6 and they allow you to define the behavior for the custom element. In this example, we want to create a flag icon custom element. And in the constructor, we will be able to define things as the element attributes, or for example, methods that define the behavior of the custom element. Then we will have to call the window custom elements.define function. You will need to pass in a name for the custom element and also match it with the class that defines its behavior. Now let's take a look at how the custom elements web API is used when creating vanilla web components. Normally, a component that represents a UI element is going to be a custom element itself, and it is going to be defined via a class. In the class, we are going to implement its behavior. Here, for example, what we are doing is to first attach a shadow tree. If you don't know what Shadow DOM is, you can take a look at another quick take that I published in the Salesforce Developers YouTube channel, which is called Explaining the Shadow DOM. And what we do is after attaching this shadow tree, we start creating the markup for that custom element. Finally, we attach the markup dynamically to the custom element, to its shadow tree. And notice here that we have to define the custom element itself. What we do is to say that the custom element is going to be called flag icon, and we bind it to the flag icon class. So how did you do this in lining with components? Well, Super easy, because the framework is going to automatically define a custom element for each Lightning Web component that is defined via a class that extends Lightning Element. Lightning Element is no more than an extension of the HTML element standard class. As you can see, we can forget both about attaching the shadow tree and also about defining the custom elements because Lightning Web Components is going to do that for us. This is what we call syntactic sewer. Well, we have seen that this is easy to do, but creating that HTML content dynamically is a bit weird and probably can be improved, right? That is exactly where the HTML templates specification is going to help us. This specification defines how to create reusable pieces of markup that we can insert into a specific section of the document on runtime. What you have to do is to define the template using HTML, and then you can retrieve it clone it and insert it in whatever node you prefer. Now, how do you use HTML templates in vanilla web components? Well, if we follow with the example that we did before, what we can do is instead of creating the HTML content dynamically in the constructor, we can create a reusable HTML template. Then what we will have to do is to retrieve the template, clone it, and append it to this shadow root. Very easy again. I have highlighted here in yellow the lines that are specifically related to the HTML templates specification. 
So, how we do that in Lightning Web Components? Super easy again, because what we will do is to create a template. In this case, we don't have to assign an ID to the template because the name of the file is going to determine to which component it belongs to. And then in the Lightning Web Component, we won't have to do absolutely anything because the Lightning Web Component Framework is going to automatically insert the template into the shadow tree of each Lightning Web Component. This means that all the boilerplate code that you need in Vanilla Web Components is not needed at all when you create Lightning Web Components. Now I'm going to show you a bit more complex example so that you get an idea of how web components look like in real life. What I have done is to create a custom component called custom logo and I have created three different implementations. In the first implementation, I have used vanilla web components and I want to use an HTML template. So basically, what I do is to create the class that defines the behavior of the component. The class needs to extend HTML element. Then I attach a shadow tree and then I create some arbitrary HTML content dynamically. Finally, I attach that content to the shadow root. And notice here that we are defining the custom element for the web component because this is needed. If we take a look at the HTML page in which this web component is placed, you can see here that I have been able to create a custom logo by using a vanilla web component that I can configure using attributes. Let's take a look at the second implementation. In the second implementation, we're going to use vanilla web components, but we're going to use an HTML template. This is the template. What we do is to retrieve the template, clone it, and then attach it to this shadow root. The third implementation is the Lightning Web Component implementation. In this case, we have a template which is defined in the HTML file of the component. Here you can see that I'm referencing some properties that are part of the JavaScript file, but I will leave the explanation of that for another quick take. And what is important here is that you don't see any code that creates a shadow tree. You don't see any code that creates a custom element and you don't see any code that attaches the HTML template. Everything is done automatically for you by the Lightning Web Component Framework. If we take a look at how these two last implementations look like in HTML, we can see that this is the second implementation, the one that uses vanilla web components and a template. And the third one is the Lightning Web Component implementation. And you can see that all of them are the same with the difference that for the Lightning Web Component, we didn't have to create all that boilerplate code. Summarizing, we have seen in this quick take how each Lightning Web component that is defined via a class that extends Lightning element is going to be a custom element and it's going to use an HTML template because the Lightning Web component framework is going to create all that boilerplate code for you behind the scenes and you won't have to take care of that. With that, I want to thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and make sure to subscribe to the Salesforce Developers YouTube channel because we will continue publishing more videos like this one. Bye bye.